Welcome everyone to our section on lipids. This will be our first lecture and this is the outline that we will follow. As a form of introduction, lipids are heterogeneous groups of compounds that are relatively insoluble in water and therefore are freely soluble in non-polar organic solvents. So to put it simply, any material that does not dissolve in water is a lipid, whatever its structure. So in the human body, lipids are important because they are part of the diet and it is a source of energy. We also synthesize lipids to store energy. Lipids provide thermal insulation and they are insulators for nerves so that conduction of neuronal information is quick and rapid. The basic structure of a lipid is that of a fatty acid. So fatty acids may combine with other fatty acids or with other structures to form more complex lipids. Fatty acids consist of a hydrophobic hydrocarbon chain with a terminal carboxyl group that has a pKa of about 4.8. So to put this simply, a fatty acid is basically a long carboxylic acid. The R group of a fatty acid is an aliphatic hydrocarbon whose length may differ. So it can be short or it can be long. The R group of the fatty acid, the hydrocarbon, will be the one that provides the nonpolar nature of fat. So the basic structure is a hydro hydrophobic hydrocarbon chain with a hydrophilic carboxyl group at the end, basically a long carboxylic acid. We further classify fatty acids based on the length of the fatty acid. Short chain fatty acids can have a length of up to six carbons. Medium chain fatty acids have a length of about up to 14 carbons. Long chain fatty acids can be um, as long as 16 carbons or more. And very long chain fatty acids have a length of at least 22 carbons. So this table in the middle shows us the different names of the fatty acids relative to the length of their carbons. What is important for us would be um, the long chain fatty acids, particularly palmitic acid, because um, that is the main storage form of a fatty acid. We have linoleic acid and linolenic acid, which are essential fatty acids, which means the body cannot make linoleic acid and alpha linolenic acid. And therefore, we must obtain these two fatty acids from the diet. Linoleic acid is the precursor of arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid, on the other hand, is the precursor for prostaglandins, which are important signaling molecules and molecules that mediate some physiologic functions in the body, such as cytoprotection of the gastric mucosa and mediation of pain and inflammation. Alpha linolenic acid is the precursor for um, omega-3 fatty acids, which are essential structural components of neuronal membranes. We also classify fatty acids based on their saturation. A saturated fatty acid has no double bond in the hydrogen chain, and therefore it is saturated with hydrogen. Remember that in the formation of a double bond, we need to remove hydrogen so that a double bond is formed. Therefore, an unsaturated fatty acid has one double bond and therefore has less hydrogens present. Depending on the number of double bonds, we can also further classify unsaturated fatty acids into monounsaturated fatty acid where there is only one double bond present and PUFAS or polyunsaturated fatty acids. In nature, monounsaturated fatty acids often occur 
in plants. For example, olive oil. While PUFAS, polyunsaturated fatty acids, often occur in animals such as in fish oil. We also can classify the fatty acids based on their geometric isomerism. In cis form, the hydrogen atoms are on the same side, while in trans form, the hydrogen atoms are on the opposite side. So for example, we can have a cis unsaturated fatty acid where the hydrogen bonds are located on the same side of the double bond, up or bottom, or if the structure is oriented vertically, left and right, and transform where in the double bond, the hydrogen um, atoms occur on opposite sides. So this is the basis for um, the term trans fat, which is in general, um, not good for human health. Let's now go into triacylglycerols and the other complex lipids. Remember that the basic structural unit is a fatty acid. So triglycerides or triacylglycerol is the main storage form of lipids in the body. It is stored in the adipose tissues. It is also known as triglyceride or neutral fat. It is neither acidic nor basic. It is formed by connecting three fatty acids with the backbone of glycerol. And here, we have the structure of a triglyceride, where in the left, we have the structure of glycerol, which is basically a trihydroxy alcohol. And we combine that with three fatty acids through a dehydration condensation to form triglycerides or neutral fat. Lipoproteins, on the other hand, are essential um, lipids that allow the other form of lipids to be dissolved in the blood. Lipoproteins are spherical, macromolecular complexes of lipids and proteins. That's why it is called a lipoprotein. The lipid will orient with the protein in the form of a sphere. Okay? The structure is presented here in the right. So a lipoprotein is basically lipid plus the protein component, which we call the apoprotein. Remember that lipoproteins allow lipids to be dissolved in plasma or to be carried in plasma. The core of a lipoprotein is usually the neutral lipid, triglyceride or cholesterol ester, while the shell of a lipoprotein would usually be an amphipathic apolipoprotein in the form of phospholipids. So the phosphate portion of the phospholipid will allow it to orient with the water component, while the lipid tail will allow it to orient in the core neutral lipid portion. So you have a head orienting uh, to the water component and the tail orienting to the lipid component. So the functions of lipoproteins include keeping lipids soluble in plasma. And that's how the blood is able to carry lipids in the body through orientation as lipoproteins. They provide efficient transport mechanisms for lipids to and from various tissues. And we will dedicate a special lesson for this one. Important lipoproteins include the following. Chylomicrons are produced in the intestine after absorption of lipid from a meal. VLDL will then be produced by the liver after the chylomicron remnant is absorbed and after the chylomicron has deposited the lipid. What is left will be processed by the liver into VLDL, which has a lot of triglycerides and cholesterol. So the VLDL will then circulate in the body and continuously deposit um, fatty acids to the peripheral tissue. And so, the triglyceride component of VLDL as it circulates continuously go down and the cholesterol and phospholipid component go up until it forms intermediate density lipoprotein 
and low-density lipoprotein where almost all triglycerides have been deposited and you are now left with a lipoprotein with the highest cholesterol component. HDL, on the other hand, is the way by which the liver takes from the periphery cholesterol. So this uh, lipoprotein has a lot of phospholipid component. That's why it has very high density. Lastly, cholesterol has this structure. This is the cyclopentanophenanthrene ring or the steroid nucleus. It is an important steroid in animal tissues. Adults synthesize 1 gram and consume 0.3 grams of cholesterol in a day, which means the body can synthesize cholesterol. Cholesterol is stored as cholesterol esters in peripheral tissues or in lipoproteins. So the structure of cholesterol is as follows, and you can um, look at it at the image on the right. Cholesterol is a 27 carbon compound, and so the numbering is shown here. Take note of where the substituents attach. Example, hydroxyl attaching to carbon number 3. The steroid nucleus is a four-fused ring labeled A to D. And the D ring is composed of a cyclopentane. An 8-carbon branched hydrocarbon chain tail is attached to carbon 17. So look at carbon number 17 and you have 8 additional um, a car eight additional carbons in the form of a aliphatic tail. Okay, a double bond exists between carbons five and six of the B ring. So remember that cholesterols are important in the body because they help stabilize the cell membrane. Their stores um, are needed to synthesize um, some form of hormones. And we also need cholesterol to be able to form bile salts, which will allow us to digest and emulsify fat. So through this lesson, we have um, talked about lipids, their um, simple nature, um, fatty acids, and how these fatty acids orient with other molecules to form complex lipids. Thank you for listening.